What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I'm the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be finishing out my look at black exploitation films with none other than Foxy Brown from 1974, starring Pam Greer, Antonio Fargus, Peter Brown, Catherine Loder, Terry Carter, and Sid Haig. Welcome once again to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. Thank you for joining me today, as you guys do each and every day. I greatly appreciate it. And today, as I said in the introduction, we're going to be finishing out our look at black exploitation films with none other than the quintessential female badass, Foxy Brown. Now, much like yesterday's film, in this movie, our heroine is on a revenge mission for justice. This time, what sparks her motivation, her wrath, is when her boyfriend, who's an undercover agent by the name of Dalton Ford or Michael Anderson, you know, he's got alter egos, like I said, undercover. But when Dalton is shot down and murdered on her doorstep by members of a drug syndicate. Now, what makes this murder really messed up is the fact that it's set up and is a result of Foxy's own brother, Link, ratting out Dalton to his drug buddies in order to get back in their good graces. You see, Link has kind of been excommunicated from some of his friends, and he wants to get back into the game. And when he discovers that Foxy's boyfriend is Dalton Ford after having some plastic surgery, he he just lets all his buddies know because Dalton is responsible for putting a good number of them into jail. Now, Foxy begins to investigate her boyfriend's murder and ends up tracing everything back to a modeling agency ran by Catherine Wall and Stevie Elias. Now, the modeling agency is just a cover. It's a front. It's actually a call girl service, which sends its girls to take care of local congressmen, um, police officers, judges, politicians, etc., in order to keep their drug-running allies out of jail and on the streets so that they can continue to supply the community with drugs and all the unnecessary evils of the world. Much like in Coffee, Foxy poses as a prostitute in order to infiltrate the, in the agency and carry out her justice. Now, while she's in the agency, she meets Claudia, one of the other call girls. And Claudia has been kept from her husband and child in order to provide sexual favors for Stevie and Catherine's clients. One day, Claudia's husband and kids show up, and they try to bring her back home. And you can visibly tell that she wants to leave this lifestyle behind and go with them, but she's afraid of what Stevie and Catherine might do. Foxy is able to get Claudia free after some finagling and a little um, encounter with one of the local judges and reunite her with her family, leaving behind the life of sex and drugs that she never wanted to be in in the first place. Not long after this, Foxy's relationship to Link and Dalton is exposed as a couple of the assassins of Dalton recognize her. She tries to escape, but she's apprehended. Foxy and Catherine then get into a heated argument, hurling insults and death threats at each other. And instead of killing Foxy, Catherine decides 
to keep her alive in order to make some money off of her via sex slave trade. Foxy is then given a shot of heroin and sent to a farm, which in actuality is a drug pot processing facility. With two of Catherine's henchmen keeping watch over her. Once Foxy wakes up, she tries to escape, but is caught by one of the men and dragged back to the bedroom. The henchman proceeds to tie Foxy to the bed while the second goon comes in and gives her another shot of heroin, trying to subdue her and calm her down. When one of the goons leaves, the other one decides he's going to rape Foxy and have his way with her. Once the sexual act is done, Foxy uses her quick thinking and her resources, and she finds a razor blade sitting on the edge of the nightstand. She uses her tongue and her chin to get the razor blade and proceeds to cut the ropes off that are binding her to the bed. Freeing herself, she then takes gasoline and dumps it on her captors and in the farm and then proceeds to light the place on fire, setting off a major explosion, killing the henchmen and destroying the drugs and the farm. She gets away in the process of all this, all the chaos going on. Furious now at all the money that's been lost, Catherine orders Stevie to kill Foxy himself. You know, she can't trust her goons to do it, obviously, so she's going to send Stevie to do it for her. Now, Stevie goes straight for Lincoln in order to try to get some information about Foxy, where she's held up. But Link has no knowledge of this because he hasn't seen Foxy since he gave up the information about her boyfriend. And Stevie doesn't believe this, so he ends up killing Link and his girlfriend. Foxy then goes to get some backup by seeking out the local chapter of the Black Panthers, which her friend Oscar is a member of. She asks them for some help, and the Panthers end up agreeing to assist Foxy in her quest. They take out, they kill Stevie's partners in crime, and they even castrate Stevie himself. When Foxy returns to Catherine's house for a final confrontation, she shows Catherine a jar which contains Stevie's genitals. Catherine flips out and sends her guards to attack Foxy, but Foxy pulls a pistol out that was hidden on her, kills the guards, and then shoots Catherine in the arm. Catherine begs to be killed herself, and Foxy denies her, saying that death is too easy, too good for her, that she wants Catherine to suffer the same way that Foxy has suffered. That's basically the meat and potatoes story of Foxy Brown. Foxy Brown, of course, has endured uh, a legacy since its release in 1974. It inspired Ingrid Marchand, the rapper, to take the moniker of Foxy Brown, going on to have such hits as Get You Home with Blackstreet, I'll Be with Jay-Z, and many, many others. It was part of the inspiration for Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown in the 90s. He always kind of considered Jackie Brown to be a pseudo sequel, you know, an older, wiser Foxy. And of course, Foxy Brown was half of the inspiration for the name Foxy Cleopatra 
in the Austin Powers gold member film, the other half coming from Cleopatra Jones. Foxy Brown, much like Coffee being a positive, strong female role model that young girls were able to look up to in a time when there weren't a whole lot of African American leading lady roles out there for consumption. Pam Greer being one of the first to really make a name for herself as an African-American leading lady. This is another film that I just adore to pieces. It's a good popcorn action, fit, action flick. You know, you're not going to see Oscar caliber performances here. That's not the purpose. What you do get is you get character actors in leading roles and roles that, you know, like I said, weren't readily available at the time. Like I mentioned yesterday, Foxy Brown, Pam Greer was able to sustain quite the lengthy career off of her roles in these black exploitation films. Antonio Vargas would go on and be Huggy Bear. Sid Haig, of course, you know, probably best known to audiences today is Captain Spaulding from Rob Zombie's films. You know, The Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpses, etc. I'm sure Sid Haig is a name that'll be coming up again. Probably not in the near future, but it'll definitely be coming up again when we get to more of the horror movies. Because he he's definitely a major player in the horror genre. I don't I don't like Foxy as much as I do coffee, which is weird to me because Foxy has got the better legacy, if you will. You know, as I stated a few minutes ago, the the inspiration for the other characters and rappers taking the name and etc. I think part of it for me is the fact that in the beginning, Foxy is just just a girlfriend. You know, she's she's just a woman scorned out for revenge. And while Coffee is a woman scorned out for revenge, she's just got a little bit more depth to her character, in my opinion. She's a nurse. She's out there really trying to make a difference in the world by working in a hospital. She's out for vigilante justice, but she's out for more than just like revenge. You know, she's out to take care of pimps and drug dealers and hustlers whereas foxy just wants the one person or the people involved in murdering her boyfriend and then she's done coffee seems like she's going to continue her justice until all the bad people in the world are gone much like the quest of the boondock saints who I talked about yesterday when I was comparing coffee. I think that's part of what I like about coffee a little bit more than Foxy Brown, but don't get it twisted. I do love the film Foxy Brown. When it comes to my rating, I'm going to give Foxy Brown three out of five stars. She is just as iconic and just as kick-ass as Shaft, but I just feel that she lacks some of the depth that Coffee does, that Coffee has. So three out of five stars for me when it comes to Foxy Brown. What do you guys think about Foxy Brown? Let me know. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below as always. I will get back to you and reply to them much like I always do. Let's get out there, folks, and get those hashtags trending on social media. 
hashtag Casa D18 Studios, hashtag Renegades Reviews, hashtag Renegade Returns, and of course, the ever popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Don't forget to do what the commercial just told you. Get out there. Support us. Get your shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network. Your Meachamania shirt. Talk wrestling. Get your shirts for the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt. Your Dad's Not Always on Wrestling shirt. Your Stat Boy Sports Bar shirt. Support us. Support the Super Chats when you see us go live whether it's on Jeff's channel or me the when I go live for Renegade Recap. Every dollar that you put in helps support us, whether it's new equipment or more movies for me to review. Not that I need more, but when you're doing a review show, you got to keep a steady flow of movies coming in so that you've got product to review. But just support us. We greatly appreciate everything that you do for us. Tomorrow, right here on a brand new episode of Renegades Reviews, as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel, will be our Black History Month feature that will not only be here, but will also be featured over on the Jeff Meacham Network. So make sure you join me tomorrow when I discuss the final film of Chadwick Boseman that I will be covering for Black History Month. None other than 42, in which he stars alongside Harrison Ford. You're not going to want to miss that one. The man, like I've said before, the man is your go-to for big names in black history. Jackie Robinson, James Brown, Thurgood Marshall, Chadwick Boseman has played all three of them and hit them out of the park, pun intended. So once again, don't forget to join me tomorrow here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, as well as the repeat play on the Jeff Meacham Network for an all new episode of Renegades Reviews, discussing 42. And until then, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.